Hello, and welcome to I Learn English. My name is Jed, and I will be your tour guide of the English language. In this class, we're going to talk about the present simple and how it's used. As always, first, I will explain it in English. So, let's get started. So here's the sequence of the class. We'll start with the uses of the present simple, then look at the irregular verbs, the formation of affirmatives, negatives, questions, and the little bit of a difference that we see with negatives and questions using to be, and then some final thoughts. First, let's take a look at when we use the present simple. The present simple is used for actions, sequences, habits and routines, general facts, schedules. So these are the situations where we use the present simple. Formation is pretty easy in the present simple. All conjugations are the same, except for third person singular, he, she, it, which adds an S. So I like, you like, he, she, it likes, we like, they like. That's how all regular verbs in the present simple will be conjugated. There are a few irregular verbs to be aware of in the present simple. And these verbs are generally irregular in every language because they're the most commonly used verbs, which are to be, to do, to go, and to have. So I am, you are, he, she, it is, we are, they are, I do, you do, he, she, it does, we do, they do, I go, you go, he, she, it goes, we go, they go, I have, you have, he, she, it has, we have, and they have. These are the irregular verbs in the present simple, and there are only four, which is really good because a lot of languages have many, many more irregulars. In general, English follows a subject, verb, object pattern which is different from a lot of other languages. And we rarely ever deviate from this pattern when we're making affirmative sentences. For example, she likes pizza. This is the most basic sentence, three words, one subject, one verb, one object. That's the pattern we're going for in general in English. They are engineers. We see the moon. She is the queen. They read the book. I ride the bus. And just a note, we use it in English generally for anything that is not human. So anything that's not a person, we will use it. So objects, tables, chairs, desks, plants, anything other than a, a person. SVO is the most common structure in English, but it's not the only one. There are other ways to form sentences. Just remember that the subject and verb always come first. For example, he likes to talk with his friends. She is a good athlete. The dog likes to play in the park. We go to work almost every day. They are very kind people. The weather changes in December and January and they travel to different places every year. So it doesn't have to be SVO. Just remember the main idea is that the subject and verb almost always come first. To change a sentence from an affirmative to a negative, we add either do not or does not before the verb. In this situation, do is what we call an auxiliary verb. And we should start to become used to them because we will see them all over the language. Let's take a look at some examples. I like pizza. I do not like pizza. We see it. We do not see it. She wants the book. She does not want the book. When a statement changes from an affirmative or negative into a question, we add the auxiliary verb of either do or does, just like we do in the negative. For example, if we wanted to change the statement of they like ice cream into a question, it would change into, do they like ice cream? He does a lot of work. Does he do a lot of work? She plays basketball. Does she play basketball? I study biology. Do I study biology? They work all day. Do they work all day? So we're adding that auxiliary verb of do to change it into a question. The rules change a little bit when we use be in a sentence. 
to change a sentence that uses to be from an affirmative to a negative, we add not after the verb. Let's take a look at some examples. She is the boss. She is not the boss. You are the best. You are not the best. I am a student. I am not a student. We are friends. We are not friends. They are the teachers. They are not the teachers. So we can see that when we use to be in the sentence to change it to a negative, we add not after the verb. Question formation is also a little bit different when we use to be. When an affirmative statement is changed to a question and uses to be, all we have to do is flip the subject and the verb. Let's take a look at some examples. She is the queen. Is she the queen? You're my friend. Are you my friend? It is the best. Is it the best? We are the pilots. Are we the pilots? They are the bosses. Are they the bosses? So when questions used to be, all we have to do is flip the subject and verb to change it into a question. So when a statement uses to be, all we have to do to change it into a question is flip the subject and the verb. I know a lot of people who are watching this video have already studied some English and are thinking, hey, Jed, but what about those words that native speakers always use that smush the words together that are hard to understand? And yeah, there are some contractions in the present simple, specifically with to be and to do. So let's take a look. So let's take a look at some of the most common contractions with to be and to do. I am, I'm, you are, your, he is, he's, she is, she's, we are, we're, they are, they're. And to do, we have do, don't, does, doesn't. So those are the key contractions for the present simple. We will build on those, but those are the main ones for right now. And some final thoughts with the present simple. It's used for general actions, habits, routines, schedules, and facts. It follows subject, verb, object, or SVO, which is the most fundamental structure in the English language. There are a few irregular verbs, to be, to do, to go, to have. These are irregular in almost every language simply because they're so common. Finally, negatives and questions have different constructions when they use to be. Those are the main things to keep in mind when thinking about the present simple. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Please feel free to contact me in the comments box if you have any questions, comments, ideas, or suggestions. And now we will continue the class in Portuguese. Ok, gente, vamos falar sobre o fundo dos fundos. Uma coisa muito fundamental. O presente simple, tá? Tipo, as coisas gerais que você faz. Vamos falar sobre como usar os verbos irregulares, formação de, de afirmativos, negativos e perguntas. E essa diferença com construção quando, quando usamos to be. Uh, algumas palavras principais para contractions e depois vamos fechar. Como usar o, o present simple? Ações, sequências, rotinas, hábitos, fatos, coisas agendadas. He buys food, they wake up, take a shower and go to work. I eat food every day. The sky is blue. The bus leaves every 15 minutes. Essas são as ideias ou sentidos que usamos o present simple. E a formação? E, gente, nesse sentido, inglês é muito mais fácil que português. Todas as conjugações são iguais, menos terceira pessoa singular, he, she, it. E só tem que botar um S no final. Só botar um S na bunda. Terminou. Então, I like, you like, he, she, it likes, we like, they like. E lembra que vou fazer outra aula sobre pronomes, mas lembra que os pronomes são importantes em inglês porque, porque temos quatro 
tempos verbais com a mesma conjugação. Então, precisamos de pronomes para diferenciar. Eu, você, ele, nós. Então, é por isso que pronomes são bem importantes em inglês. Mais que em português. Aqui são os verbos irregulares principais no present simple, no present tense. E lembra que ser e estar são igual em inglês, são iguais, não tem diferença entre ser e estar, isso é bom. Também não tem diferença entre fazer. Fazer, para a gente, tem dois sentidos, to do or to make. To go, ir, e ter, to have. Então, I am, you are, he, she, it, is, we are, they are, I do, you do, he does, she does, it does, we do, they do, I go, you go, he goes, it goes, she goes, we go, they go, I have, you have, he, she, it has, we have, they have. Esses são os verbos irregulares no presente e tem apenas quatro. Ótimo, né? Então, vamos falar sobre afirmativos, que são as frases mais básicas da idioma. E, em geral, inglês segue uma estrutura que se chama de SVO. Sempre vai sujeito, depois verbo e depois objeto. Sempre. E isso é essencial. Não pode cortar palavras, pronomes, tipo em português. Tem essa estrutura essencial e, geralmente, não tem exceções. Então, tem que lembrar isso. SVO é a forma mais principal do inglês. E isso é bem importante. They are engineers. We see the moon. She is the queen. They read the book. I ride the bus. E lembra que it, que não existe em português, a gente usa para qualquer coisa que não é ser humano. Então, objetos, outras coisas. Usamos he ou she com bicho de estimação, porque são tipo família, né? Mas, em geral, it a gente usa para coisas fora de ser ser humano. Beleza. E sim, SVO é a estrutura mais comum, mas claro que tem outros jeitos de falar, só tem que lembrar que o sujeito e verbo são primeiros. Por exemplo, he likes to talk with his friends, she is a good athlete, the dog likes to play in the park, we go to work almost every day, ah, tristeza, né? They are very kind people, the weather changes in December and January, they travel to different places every year. Então, tem outras maneiras de terminar a sentença, mas lembra que subje sujeito e verbo sempre vem primeiro. Tá. Negativos. Para formar um negativo, vai inserir ou do not ou does not antes do verbo. E nesse sentido, a gente se chama do verbo de auxiliary verb. Tá? E... É bom para se acostumar com esses auxiliary verbs porque são bem comum em inglês, tá? Vamos olhar. I like pizza. I do not like pizza. We see it. We do not see it. She wants the book. She does not want the book. Para formar uma pergunta em inglês, você tem que inserir um auxiliary verb, ou do ou does, na pergunta. They like ice cream. Do they like ice cream? He does a lot of work. Does he do a lot of work? She plays basketball. Does she play basketball? I study biology. Do I study biology? They work all day. Do they work all day? Então, em geral, você só tem que inserir o do or does para formar uma pergunta no present simple. Ótimo. Contudo, e é um grande contudo, as regras mudam quando a gente usa to be. Okay? Quando a gente usa to be, o negativo vai ter not depois. Por exemplo, 
She is the boss. She is not the boss. You are the best. You are not the best. I am a student. I am not a student. We are friends. We are not friends. They are teachers. They are not teachers. Então, quando você usa to be com uma frase negativa, vai inserir not depois do verbo. Uma coisa interessante acontece quando a gente usa to be no sentences. Vai mudar a estrutura e vamos dar uma olhada. Simplesmente tem que trocar a posição do sujeito e o verbo. Olha, she is the queen. Is she the queen? You are my friend. Are you my friend? It is the best. Is it the best? We are the pilots. Are we the pilots? They are the bosses. Are they the bosses? Então, com perguntas que usam to be, só tem que trocar o sujeito e verbo. Ótimo. E eu sei, todo mundo estava falando, ah, gente, cadê as contrações? Cadê os, os, as palavras que todos os americanos e nativos usam? Aqui é a lista, no presente. To be, I am, I'm. You are, your. He is, he's. She is, she's. We are, we're. They are, they're. E com to do, do, don't, does e doesn't. Essas são as contrações essenciais no present simple. E finalmente, lembra que o present simple a gente usa para coisas em gerais, ações, hábitos, rotinas, coisas agendadas, fatos. E lembra que nosso idioma fundamentalmente é um idioma de SVO, sujeito, verbo, objeto. Temos uns quatro verbos irregulares, to be, to do, to go e to have, porque são irregulares em todos os idiomas, porque são os verbos mais comuns. E finalmente, as regras mudam um pouquinho quando a gente usa to be no negativo e com perguntas. Muito obrigado, gente. Tomara que essa aula ajudou a resolver algumas dúvidas com o Present Simple e com a formação de negativos e perguntas. Qualquer dúvida pode entrar em contato comigo no comment box e boa sorte e bons estudos.